Hello, welcome back to Fired Glass and today we're going to the seaside. Hello, Jill Tisbury here from Fired Glass with another project. Um, this is going to use up all your scrap bits. Um, so we had a lady called Frida. Hi, Frida. Um, I know she watches these videos. Uh, she came on our workshop and uh, she fancied making um, a beach scene, something similar to this. So um, we had a chat, had a look at what we'd got, and this is what we came up with. Um, this was actually mine. Um, Frida's got hers, which uh, has got pride of place somewhere in her house. Um, and they look great. So this one's on a curve. The one we're going to do today, um, I'm going to do on a wave, funnily enough because it is the seaside. So shall we get started? I'm going to put this over here, out the way. <coughs> okay, so I've already cut my glass. This is uh, a piece of uh, three millimeter Tecta glass, just um, your standard clear glass. Craft glass, I should say. Um, just going to put it on these two uh, shelf props. So I've already measured this. It fits my mould. It's 12 centimetres tall and uh, it's 30 centimetres long. You could do it slightly longer depending on your mould. Obviously, you need to cut it to fit your mould. Um, the moulds I'm using is a, is a metal stainless steel mould from um, Paul Gardner. So um, we've done that before on some of our other videos. So have a look at those. Um, we've also done a a video on how to prep those moulds. So I'm not going to cover that here. I want to get straight on with the seaside scene. Right, so if you've got a student pack of glass or you've got loads of bits and pieces of glass that are kicking around. I know I've got a, a drawer full down here of, of these little bits and they either end up as dots um, so that you know people can use them in projects on workshops or um, you, you kind of never know what to do with them. They're perfect for this. So I've chosen a series of colours. Now, um, I've already done this because it's quite tedious to watch me cutting these things out. Um, but essentially, I'm going to make a little row of houses like these. So um, I should talk about the uh, horizon line, shouldn't I? So. If you remember um, what we saw, it had sea down the bottom. It had a sort of a wall, sea wall or a path or something like that. And then it had the row of houses. I'm going to leave the top clear. Um, so I'm not going to put any powder in for the sky. I just um, want the colours of these houses um, to sing, really. Now, it's like an old Victorian seaside town. So to be perfectly honest, they can be crooked, they can, you know, they can lean a bit. It's absolutely fine. So you can see all that I've done here is I've cut out um, oblongs. This is uh, it's a little bit long. So if I wanted a house from this, just a quick score along there. And that would give me um, a little house. So when you cut these um, on here, obviously, as you go along, um, once you get to the end, you don't want a really thin house. So make sure as you go that you can see that you're, you're going to have houses similar size. I've got a big long one um, in the middle. Um, the colours that I chose on here are pretty much analogous colours. So what I mean by that is that they're from the same part of the colour wheel. And then every now and again, you stick in a complementary colour. So you can see I've got a yellow one there. Um, I've got um, the opposite of the blues, which is this orangey um, sort of rust colour. Um, and I've got one that's, that's still analogous with the, it's, it, analogous means it's next door to that colour on the colour wheel. So um, the green kind of fits with the blues on here. Um, so I'm gonna just glue these on as we go so that we're ready. I've already um, glued the doors and windows on. I'm going to show you that in a second. Oh, you don't need a massive amount of glue. So just a little dob on there. I'm actually going to move these up a little bit because I want quite a decent amount of C on here. And it's always nice to have something just above the middle of the piece as opposed to sort of smack bang in the middle. 
So these are going to go on here. Oop, I'm already demolishing this house. Look, I pulled his window off. Let's just put that back on there. Now I'm gluing these in place because now and again, these things just decide that they're going to jump around in the kiln. You don't want them jumping around in the kiln. You just, uh, your tweezers are your, are your friend here. <laughs> So just make sure that, I mean, I know I said they're wonky Victorian houses, but they're not that wonky. Um, this one, by the way, is a bit of a rolled edge on this. Um, I only realised once I'd cut it and glued the things on. And uh, I'm just going to go down here, actually, and start from that end. So because he's got a, this rolled edge, looks like uh, he's had a bit of subsidence on his house, bless him. So I think that one's going there and this one goes in the middle in here. So what I did with this one is when I put his roof on, don't know why he's a he, but apparently he is. We don't want a wonky roof, but I have got a sort of a piece of, uh, it's like shutter boarding or something like that. So that'll go over there. And uh, so you can, you can use all sorts of scrappy bits of um, glass on here. And funnily enough, you can get away with it. So that's absolutely fine. So this one here then, this is an oblong um, that I've cut. I've decided that their door, let's just get these from over here. Their door and their windows are a complementary colour to this. So they're an opposite on the colour wheel. And all I've done um, from this piece, um, it's actually the same as that house, is just cut... Uh, it's a two millimeter uh, thick uh, piece that I had in a student pack, I think. So I've just cut um, a sort of three or four mil strip off here like that. So it's dead simple. Um, and then scored it to make the windows and uh, a slightly bigger one to make the doors. So all we do is just let's have a little bit of glue on there. So we'll put his door in here. I don't know why it's a he. Apparently it is. Let's have a look at these. So they quite often had um, three stories. Oh, there we go. I'm missing a window. I think I knew what I did with that. This um, pot over here, which I'm going to grab in a second. as you can probably see, is full of all sorts of scrap. Um, so some of these are the, the windows that I've done. And this is my dots pot. So when I next to a full fuse, a load of these go in with in the spaces for my full fuse. And then I've got a load of dots which are useful for other projects. And I thought that this was a spare one, but obviously not. It was a window from here. There we go. So a bit of glue in the middle. House goes in place, and that is my row of houses. Woohoo! So the next thing that you need are roofs to go on here. So I have um, some rose brown, I think it was, and slate grey. If you can see this, you can probably see the light through that. So that's rose brown um, and slate grey, and all I've done here is where you've got the end bits you can see it needs a straight edge on here and it needs the angled edge of the roof so let's just put some glue a little bit a couple of dots Oops. oh got a thunderstorm outside don't know if you can hear that i love thunderstorms it's thundering quite well outside. So um, the straight edge obviously is going to go ag against the straight edge of a glass here. Make sure that's down tight on the roof. I'm just going to nick a bit of glue there. And we put little chimneys on top. Of course, you need somewhere for the seagulls to sit, obviously. So the rest of them, let's put those on here. So I've done a mixture. Um, and again, there's gaps. Can you see that? There's a gap in between. It's absolutely fine. Some of the houses have gaps, some of them don't. 
it's not a perfect scene is is what makes it sort of really quaint the fact that some of these houses are wonky like that one so there we go that's fixed him go oh, i get carried away with this stuff that's the last one and this one again's got a straight edge as you can see just there right so a little bit of a dot for the chimneys how many chimneys have we got that one's got one that's got one this one's a big old house so he's got two chimneys on there this is probably one of those things that you could do with the kids as well um, you know if you can cut the squares for them um, depends how old they are and sort of how they uh, they get on with this stuff but um, it's um, it's one of those things that the kids like to do because they can make up all sorts of stories about who lives in the house or well, that might just be me <laughs> oh dear yay chimneys on all the houses hockey dockey cool so we've now got all of our houses in place and what i'm going to do um, is a couple of things and i have a path along here and then i'm going to put the sea along here so i think what we'll do first of all is let's put the sea oh look at that beautiful colors <laughs> thunder thunder's really loud outside um, so these are, again, scraps of glass that I've had from other projects, like this kind of thing. And the way you do this is very, very simple. Let me just turn that over and we'll catch it in here. So um, these are tile nippers. You can get tile nippers from um, most DIY stores, really. Um, I should say you can get two types of tile nippers, so I'll show you those. This one, um, these are a bit painful because all the ones I've ever seen, this spring falls out. So um, I've tried nipping it up, tried gluing it, it still falls out. Um, this one, slightly chunky pair of um, tile nippers, and you can see the difference when I close them up. The blue pair has got hardly any gap, it's probably got a one maybe two millimeter gap and this has got a three millimeter gap so this is great for cutting three millimeter glass and, and pieces of glass that are thicker than that um, and it's a, a bit more heavy duty this is the one that you want if you're going to um, snap well generally you can snap stringers with your hand but sometimes they're a bit stubborn so you might want this so there are different types that you can get hardware stores are where you will probably find those so i'm going to use this one so if you've got a square um, edged piece of glass like this, um, some of these bits here, as you can see, have got beautiful curves on them. What you really don't want um, are, mm -mm, let me find one, a square edged piece like that. You can't, well, you do if you want that to go on the edge of your glass, but to be honest, you want them like this. So these give you the wave shapes. Now this is great for um, if you are doing the sea waves. Um, I'm sure you've seen those projects before. So this is exactly what you would use um, for the sea wave projects. Um, you just put them on your glass in a nice curve. So what you do is you get your nippers on the edge of the glass and you can see um, that I've kind of angled those so that you're forcing it to sort of give you this, this curve snap and you can see you've got that sort of edge um, which is that square edge so if you angle that again here you want a box ideally to capture these in otherwise they're all over your studio see they're getting better so once you've done a straight edge like this you've now got a nipped edge which is probably a bit better for you to cut these things from and the further in you go the bigger your pieces are going to be so if you want some nice big pieces like that, just go a bit further in on the edge. 
There we go. Dangerous being a cameraman doing this, isn't it? <laughs> it's great once you've got to this edge, you can get some really nice big pieces. And these all go in my pots because um, we use these at Christmas um, for creating wreaths. Um, so the little tree wreaths um, are useful. Stick that back in my box. Now, um, if you've got ones with a square edge like this, Effectively, if you turn that over and just do that, you can see that we've chopped the square edge off and that can either be, um, it can go in my bead pot actually, over there, which is fine. So there's one more there, I'm just going to chop the edge off. There we are. And that's in my bead pot. So that is... Um, the quick way of getting all your waves. So just cut yourself a selection of those. Um, now I have done my selection from opal glass and transparent glass and in a selection of colours, as you can see. So we've got some beautiful um, sort of tints of green there. I'll just move those out so you can see them. Um, we've got this glass that are used for the house here. Um, was a beautiful uh, larger piece of streaky and you can see there's two sides to that so that comes out really nicely um, on a piece like this so let's use them shall we so what I do here I'm just going to go along the edge of this and along here I put a little bit of glue on here and just you don't need massive amounts of glue you just want this to be able to stick in place there we go. Okay, so we've got some glue. Let's get going. Now, um, I did say we've got some with um, square edge like that that you may want to use on the edge of the piece. And I'm not going to put any frit in between. If you remember this, you can see here that this, I didn't bother putting for it. You can do if you want, but I quite like the spacing and I quite like the um, sort of impasto oil painting look of it, if you know what I mean, where people have just daubed a big um, splodge of paint to indicate the waves. I just like that style um, for this piece. So that's what we're, we're going to do here. No for it, just um, spacing in between. But what you do want to do um, is make sure that your colours are kind of um, random really so you don't want a whole swathe where you've suddenly got light green and then obviously another swathe where um, you know you've got a dark blue you want a kind of nice random mixture and that looks really cool so you can kind of really lose yourself doing this. So um, I apologise already if I go quiet. It's like going to sleep doing glass work, isn't it? So just make sure you've got some nice... This was a lovely glass. This was um, kind of clear with streaky blue in the middle of it. And it also had some crazing in it. Um, comes out really nicely. This one um, is, you possibly see that, I don't know if I hold that up. Can you get that in the camera? You, no, that's got iridescent um, coating on it. So sometimes I'll have that face up, sometimes I'll have that face down. Um, doesn't matter because you see a subtle iridescence if it's face down. And when it's face up, of course, you get that um, little sheen on the top, that iridescent sheen. It's very nice. Okie dokie, let's have a big, oops, big square edge. I think we'll pop that over here for now. Let's have that that way. There's another square edge there. don't have to be exactly square to the edge. Now 
I've only got a few of these because I only had a small piece of this. Um, I've got some more, I just didn't cut it up. So I'm going to put these randomly to make sure that they're random across the piece and then fill in, I think. Um, it's this beautiful, um, I think it's peacock colour, really nice. Start to sing to myself now. That's never good. You don't want massive gaps, but you do want um, the gaps in between. And if pieces aren't quite in the place that you want, then just move them. It's um, you know, it's not a an exact science doing this. I actually like that the other way around. Oops. It's a very calming piece to make, I find. And it looks so nice when it's finished as well. So we're nearly there. I'm leaving this um, kind of gap for the path as we go along here. Oh, that's a nice iridescent bit there. Oh, a bit of turquoise. Very nice. So we kind of almost there. I'll put the blue bit on the top there. So that's my line, I think. Well, that's a bit of aventurine blue. <laughs> it's quite dark. So I think we'll leave him out for now. So when I do the path, um, there's a couple of things that you can do with the path. You can either, um, this is a nice one of those greens look there. You can either um, mix a kind of like a beach um, mix. So if you've never done that before, it's quite simple. You need some French vanilla and uh, you need to mix it with uh, something like sulfur bearing or selenium. Uh, type glass, something like um, sunset coral. So if you mix it with sunset coral, um, just a little bit of that powder, you'll get a pebble beach effect, um, which is what we did for this one. Um, I think we mixed that actually with a bit of turquoise, so turquoise will work as well. Um, and it just gave us this very subtle effect. Um, I have a meadow mix pot that I'll show you in a second. Uh, let's just finish this off. Let's turn that over. Pop that in there. So we're going to use our meadow mix pot to give us a sort of pathway. Maybe it's a grass pathway or something like that that goes along there. So pretty much um, we are done, I think. Last couple of bits. Okay, I think I'm cool with that. Right, so uh, we've got the sea in, uh, got the houses in. So I'm just going to turn this round because it's easier to do it this way. And it's so much easier to um, work with the project when you've got those kiln um, supports on there. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue at the end there and at the end here. And then here... Can you tell this is years of icing cakes? Just lift it up and let it go. That's it. The reason I've put that line there is I want to try and stop the um, meadow mix, which is this stuff here, from falling into the sea. <laughs> so this is like um, a path. Right, meadow mix. 
Meadow mix is when my <laughs> students um, have forgotten to sweep up or, or capture. Again, when we work on this, obviously, if you're going to put powder on something, it'll fall off the edge. Um, and most people are um, quite good at picking it up and putting it back in the pot, because usually there's quite a lot that falls off. If they don't, then we put it in here, which is great, because we use this, it's called a meadow mix, um, to do all the sort of grass and greenery at the bottom of one of our meadow scenes. So it's got all sorts of bits in here. So I reckon that this town um, are going in for the Wildlife Flower Awards because this will be a path that's full of wildflowers, basically. It's, it's full of greens, mainly. Um, little bits of red in there. So when this fires, it's quite nice because it, um, it gives you that sort of mixture. And it's a great little way of using up bits that otherwise, you know, you'd end up with a, a sort of pile of rubbish that you don't want. So you see the glue stops it going off the end, but it um, also means that it will stick at the end. It won't fall off the end and you won't end up with a big gap there. So let's just put this down here. So it might be that they've got some sort of beach in this town that, um, you know, goes right to the edge of the sea and is, is full of wildflowers or something. Sea heather. So this is, uh, is another mix but it's actually just where people have not picked up the sky mix so I'm just doing a little bit of blue powder along here there we go so that's absolutely spot on that's exactly what we need so let's move this back so you can see what it looks like so we've now got this sort of pathway. Um, we've got the sea, we've got the houses. Every good seaside town needs seagulls. So this is how we made the seagulls. I'm going to move them to, uh, let me move this over and you can see this on the camera better. So at the moment you're probably thinking she's gone mad now because they're not seagulls, they're just chunks of glass. So we need our little choppers. Oh, there we go. Springs come out again. Seagulls, when you look at them, um, they've got obviously a big white body, um, which is kind of almost triangular. So I'll show you what I mean. Let's start with our first seagull up here. They're pretty big seagulls, I have to say. But never mind. So there's his body. So we got to that by chopping a piece off the edge here and then just maybe nibble away a little bit so it's got it's kind of longer on one side. Oh that's a bit smaller. Let's use that one for that one because he's further away. So we'll pop him on there. We need some legs so we've got stringers and this is a half mil stringer. These are like cartoon seagulls basically. I'm just going to wipe a bit of glue off there so we can use it for that. Put his little legs on. There we are. He needs some wings. So we did exactly the same thing with um, Oh, I've obviously put it away. Oh, there it is. This is the slate grey that we talked about. Um, so we need his wings. So I'm just going to take a bit of that glue, pop that on there, twist it slightly. So there's his body. There's his tail sticking out. Um, he needs a beak. So these are just little snips that I snipped off. I'm going to put a tiny dab of glue on there so I can dip into it. There we go. These are little snips that I snipped off. 
the edge of some orange. Actually, I want that the other way about, I think. And he wants a little eye. So the eyes, um, I do actually fire tiny, as you can see, it's rolling away there. That's a bit big, probably. But I do actually fire tiny, tiny little beads, um, which are tiny bits from the end of a one millimeter stringer. Um, and they're useful for projects like this. They're useful if you're doing a, a freeze and fuse. I think his beak's a bit too big, so I'm just going to chop that in half. This is where it's going to fly somewhere else. There it's gone. So that's, it's just a little triangle for his beak there. This is where you do need your tweezers. It's quite useful. There we are. So there's my little seagull on there. Now things look better in five, so I've actually chopped off four or five seagulls. So some of them are going to be in the water. So again, little triangular body on here, so we don't need legs for them. Um, I'm just going to put his wing on there. Maybe that's up a little bit. Put an eye on there. And a little beak. There's the one that I've just had. Let's turn that over. So you can get carried away. You can have little boats on here. We did a boat on that last one that you saw. Um, but there's only one seagull on that one. I'll show you in a second. The trouble with this is once you pick the tiny bits up and you get glue on your tweezers, it's really difficult to put them in place. There we go, a bit of glue. Put him in there. I think... Um, Perhaps we've got one more who's on the roof. Let's make him a bit smaller. Ooh. So you can have these whatever size you want. You just need your, there we go, mosaic pliers. Get a little bit of glue. I'll have this one over here. A couple more legs. One, two. So we just break them off. S simple to do. Pick up some of that glue. <laughs> He's a bit bandy legged. We don't want bandy legged seagulls. He's eaten too many chips, this one. Okay. Little beak. And then I'm going to do some, oops, flying away. Poppy's beak. I think he needs just a little bit on there. Chop that off. So all these tiny bits that are flying off all over the place, um, I'm just going to pop those in my bead pot. So we'll have big beads, small beads, things for every project. So there we go, he's got his wing sticking up there. He just needs an eye. So this is um, just one of the bits that I've chopped off the end of, a, of one of these stringers. <laughs> I've lost it now. <laughs> there it is. Oh la la. Got helicopters outside today. There we are. Cool. 
So the other thing um, that you can do to finish this one off, if you would like, uh, you can do this with uh, any of your projects, is you can make um, some little birds that are flying away, because they're obviously all over the seaside. So I think um, we've got three birds here, so let's have two that are flying away. There we go. So this is a, a very, very simple thing to do. You just need a pair of tweezers, need a candle. So I've got a little tea light here. If you're going to do loads of these, then you need to get yourself some protective glasses to protect from the, the glare. But at the moment, this is fine. We're just doing a couple. So this is a really good conductor of heat. Um, the metal obviously but the glass isn't so what you should find is that this will be fine but this is going to be very hot at the end make sure you've got some paper or something down hold this over the edge and as you see you just lift it higher if, if you want to stop it bending but you can probably see that my stringer if I stop talking because the Flames moving. My stringer is bending. This is great for bee, le uh, bee leaves, bee legs even. So just leave that to cool a bit. I'm going to drop it on here and you'll probably see. Oh, you won't because I actually cooled it. Quite often if you do this and then drop it on the paper, you get big brown marks where it starts to burn the paper. But you see, there you go. There's a bit bigger wing. If you put it straight on the paper, there you go, you can see how warm this is, so just cool that a little bit. So don't be tempted to pick those up right now. They'll cool very quickly, but you can see when I put them together, we've got a little bird flying away. So we just want one more. So just right over the end of the flame, which is where it's the hottest. that on there and the next bit so just need four bits for two birds fabulous just cool that a little bit get rid of that and we're good to go so we still got a little bit of um, glue left so, a bit of glue there. Tiny bit on that. Just so that we make sure it's in place. Just be careful, don't to um, wipe the end of your tweezers with um, your hand because they might still be quite hot. Bit of glue there. There we go. Fabulous. That's it. Happy with that, I think. So I've got a seagull in the sea. And your seagulls come out like this. So I've just put a little rock um, in there and we've stood the seagull on it, as you can see. Um, we put a little boat in this one as well. So just get creative, really, um, with what you want to put in there. And this is very simple. We just um, snipped off. Um, you imagine these with the straight edge, any one of those, you could use um, like a boat. So we did that obviously with the red. Um, and we put a couple of pieces of stringer for a mast and then another um, straight edge piece for the sail. And that's it. So um, we're going to fire this on a tack fuse. So um, I think top temperature in my kiln particularly, um, I tend to go to seven, six, five um, and that will retain all this beautiful texture on here and then we're going to slump it on a wave so we'll show you what that looks like when it's finished um, but I like that nice little project uses up all your scrap good to go so I hope you enjoyed that um, don't forget to subscribe so hit the little bell icon as well to be notified for when we put more 
projects up so um, I think we've got a few more in the pipeline that we're going to do um, shortly so yeah get all your scrap out and get making thanks for watching and see you next time on the fired glass youtube channel take care bye